Hello. Well, a few weeks ago, you may have seen me working on an LG branded TV and computer monitor. And it was extremely hard to take apart, but once I did so, I was able to fix the power supply in it. Well, today, I've had another breakdown. This is an LG and it's a computer monitor only. Uh, model W2261V. Uh, and I believe it's completely dead. So uh, let's see if we can uh, find out what's wrong with it. The other one, if you remember, made a strange noise when I powered it up. I'm not sure what this is doing. Let's uh, switch it on with the isolation transformer. I think I heard a faint noise. I'm not sure. OK, well, let's take it apart. That's going to be the first challenge. Now, on the other one, I had to take some screws out the back and release the base and then take the front off. But this one, I'm not seeing any screws at all. I can't see any screws, but I can kind of see here that there are some clips to release. Uh, but that may just be for the um, clear front bezel bit. Well, I don't know where to start, but I guess the place to start would be pop the front bezel off if I can. And something I learned from the last one is maybe start from the bottom. I just thought I'd try something again, actually. Um, I s switched it off and on, and you do get a momentary red light flash on the power switch. Well, I did the first time. You're supposed to, I think, put your hand there for it to fire up, but it's not. But the fact that it flashed the light at all does mean that it's uh, potentially just capacitor trouble. Right, carry on removing this front bezel. It's hard on your fingers. Okay, a bit of care here because we've got these switches. All right, there's a cable I can see down in this corner, so I can unplug that. Oh, actually, it's easier to just take the board out. Unfortunately, I've had a disaster. Instead of unplugging the connector from the board, I've pulled the wires out of the connector. That's going to make life a little bit difficult later. Not least because I don't know the order of the connections. Hopefully I can find a service manual and solve that problem. OK, I now have the connector out, but uh, it's going to take some repair work. Yes, worse still on that connector, there's one blue and three grey connectors. Oh dear. Hopefully it'll be obvious. Perhaps I can work it out from the other end. Right, there's another connector to the rear panel. Just to the headphone socket, I think. Well, power supply is going to be in here. There's the mains input. Let's find out if it comes apart. That is quite familiar to... Uh, quite similar to what was on the TV, and so are these uh, backlight connectors. That connector I broke is just on the other side of the connector that goes to the front here, so it shouldn't be that hard to uh, work out which pin goes where. But let's get it working first.
Right, that's removed the main board and the power supply from the screen. There's a plastic insulator here, which I think just slides off. Right, now we're at the power supply. I'm going to treat it with a certain amount of respect, as I always do with these things that could still potentially have some high voltages on it. Right, now we have just the uh, power supply. So I'm going to uh, look at any voltages that are still on these uh, high voltage capacitors here, which come off the mains rectifier. Now what I don't do, and a lot of other people do, is to short them out with a screwdriver. No. I don't like sparks flying around. 300 millivolts on the capacitors. I'm sure they'll be in parallel across each other. Do you know, I think these must have a resistor in there to discharge those. Now, last time, when I was working on the TV version, it was a couple of capacitors, just like these. In fact, these very ones, uh, which had failed, uh, they were 16 volt, 1000 microfarad. So let's have a look in the power supply. And these capacitors here, and if you can see, they're all bulging. All five of those are bulging. That one looks okay. And some smaller ones. So these five capacitors have all obviously failed. Are they the same make as these? Sam Young, they were. Uh, these are branded Suscon or something. Heavens. They're the same, though. They're 1000 microfarad, 16 volt. Well, that one is. That's 470. Right, so we've got three at 1016 uh, volt, and one, possibly two, can't quite see, which are 470 microfarad, 35 volt. So let's hope I've got some replacements. They all, of course, do have to be high temperature rated, as these supposedly were. So 105 Celsius components. <coughs> Looking at the board then, I have changed these three 1000 microfarad capacitors, these two 470 35 volt capacitors, uh, and because they were all swollen. This was another uh, 470 at 35 volt, and it wasn't swollen up, but I've replaced it anyway just to be on the safe side. Uh, and I've checked these smaller value capacitors, and they're okay. So um, that should be okay. We'll um, next go through these capacitors, see what happened to the old ones. Right, this was the one that was not swollen up, the 470. So I'm expecting it to be okay. Uh, yeah, good enough. Then we have uh, the other 470s. These were in parallel. Ooh, that's quite a long way down. It would probably still function if the other one of the pair re reads okay. Both a long way down. This circuit may or may not have functioned with those in that state. Then we've got the uh, 1000 microfarad capacitors here. Well, that's pretty good. That would not have... So that's not a smoking gun. Even though it's bulged quite badly at the top, that's not a smoking gun. So I haven't really found anything yet that says that's the reason the monitor didn't work. Oh, that is. Yeah, that would stop it. It's just become a 2 ohm resistor. And finally, the last remaining 1,000. And another one. So they are probably the reason it doesn't work. 
Uh, it's worth checking the first capacitors across after the diodes rectifiers. These don't fail that often, but I've had them fail on an occasion before. So these are in parallel as well. So there's two, well, they were on the other circuits. I'm sure they are on this. They were on the TV. There's two 68s. So we're looking at what, 136 microfarads or thereabouts. Um, we're reading 130 odd, so that's fine. They're good enough. I think I'll just uh, check the fuse, make sure we haven't blown that. Fuse is okay. So I think we can go ahead and refit this. This screw are for the earthing terminal here has a bigger washer on it. So fit that in the right place. You know, I'm not happy there's enough clearance between the tops of those new capacitors and the metal case. So I think I'm going to add a little insulator. I'm sure it would have been fine, but I'm just playing safe. Like this cable that I damaged, uh, I pushed all the pins back into one end and tested it. So uh, that's all working. Just a um, four way connector, it's nothing complicated. Right, I've reassembled it, uh, including this cable that goes between the two front panel parts, and that's the one I ripped off, or one end of the other I ripped off by accident. That end. Uh, and I've reconnected this complicated board at the back, which seems to be just for the headphones. Uh, there's an awful lot of connectors there, just for a pair of headphones. I don't know why that's so complex. Perhaps that includes um, an amplifier. Uh, and the main unit's all back in place. So what I'm going to do before I refit this and can't get it off again, is just test it as is and just see if it powers up and if we can get some sort of on-screen thing before I uh, reassemble it properly. Well, I don't know what's supposed to stop this from slopping about. Well, hopefully it'll become abundantly obvious when it's reassembled, you know, and it won't, won't slop about like this, because at the moment the board here doesn't seem to have the main unit, doesn't have anything to hold it in place. Right, so it's sort of all hanging in bits at the minute, but hopefully the red light here will come on when I power it up, and that something might happen when I select some of these sort of buttons along here, that menu button. Pairing up on the isolation transformer now. LG it says. Check signal cable, that seems to make sense. So it looks like it's working, but I'm not sure I've got the control panel working here. Because none of the buttons seem to do anything. Maybe they won't without a signal. All right, I'll have to give it a signal. OK, try it with a signal from a PC. Right, do the buttons work now? Yes. Good. That was worth checking. I can reassemble it now. Hopefully it's a case of just push it back together and the main panel inside will stop sliding about at that point because I really don't see anything to hold it in place. Yes, that's right, it is just held in place by the back. Okay, reassemble it. Final check. Good, that's working. And there we are, handful of capacitors is all it took. And of course, most people would have thrown this away and that's a terrible waste for just a few pence worth of uh, capacitors. But uh, 
they don't make them terribly easy to take apart, do they? I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.